Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky token black guy that's just trying to get by. And welcome to another edition of The Token 5. My top 5 list on a particular subject matter, and this Token 5 is in conjunction with the Street Fighter flashback. In celebration of the 30 year anniversary of Street Fighter, I'm taking it upon myself to share my memories of playing the games in the arcade or at home, and as well as share my personal thoughts and feelings on other Street Fighter related media. Well, I already did my f five favorite antagonists of the series. Might as well talk about my top five favorite protagonists of the series. Now, here's the thing. Street Fighter is kind of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Where the heroes or the good guys tend to get a little more focus and development than the villains. And with that in mind, you know, I am doing this a little differently. In my antagonist list, I basically just judged these people by the complexity of their characters and everything and their motivation, you know. Here, I'm doing things a little different. Here, what I am going to do is basically give my favorite five protagonists based on the complexity of the character or their interest, how interesting they are, you know. Then, I am also going to base this on how much they've actually, how important they are to the series and how they've progressed the story, you know. And finally, I should state this, you know, I shouldn't, I mean, I have to state this, I shouldn't have to, but I will. These are my opinions, guys, so, you know, if you disagree and everything, feel free and everything. This is just my personal opinion, all right? So, delay this little, I delay this as long as I can. Let's kick off this list with number five, Alex. Now... You guys hear me talk about Alex a lot, so I don't have to go too much into detail with him. Well, no, actually, I have to because I have to talk about his um, with his personality. More. So, bear with me. So, why is Alex number five and everything? Well, for starters, he is the lead protagonist of the Street Fighter Three series, and if you are watching this. I'm assuming that you've watched the other videos by now, and you know that basically so Street Fighter 3 is my favorite series, number one. and But number two, also, as the protagonist of the lead series, right, Alex is very interesting, both by his personality and fighting style. You see, Street Fighter is, at its, at its core, a martial arts fighting game. You know, and when people tend to think of martial arts, they usually think of like, you know, combat techniques that derives from Asia, right? However, here we have a person that is the lead character and, you know, spoiler alert, the champion of the World Warrior Tournament from the World Third World Warrior Tournament. And the guy is actually a grappler. You know, at his core, he's a powerhouse grappler submissions and slams and throws and everything now get out of his may compared to other grapplers he's a little more flexible and a little fast you know he has some hard-hitting punches he's able to utilize kicks in an interesting way but at his core he's a grap he's a large grappling dude and everything to top it off his personality is actually pretty interesting you know he is by all accounts a bit of a hothead but, you know, his high-headedness is not, like, out of control, like, you know, snapping off at anyone at a moment's notice. You know, if he loses his temper, he has a pretty good reason. It's usually for a good cause and everything. It, and mainly when it comes to somebody attacking somebody very close and dear to him and everything. It's the gang mentality. Yo, you hit my boy, I'm coming after you, and I'm hitting you back and everything. And... But if you look at his transition from 
second impact to third strike, he actually analyzes his fights and his opponents a little bit more, you know, which shows a remarkable growth uh, and maturity of the character. So Alex is pretty compelling and everything. So I've, I think I spoke about him for about three minutes. So let's move on. We got to move on. All right. Number four. Now, number four is a cop out and it's a bit of a cheat, but I feel that basically both of these characters are equally important. And I'm talking about Nash and Guile. Now, like I said, it's a cop-out, two people for number four, but I feel that they both actually really, really push the series. You know, where it comes to Nash, basically, he was the first casualty of basically what happens when you try to go up against Shadowloo and everything. He was the first one to actually directly encounter Vega in hand-to-hand -hand combat and everything. And he actually beat Vega. But Vega, with his connections, like, actually, like, basically was able to get the jump on Nash and everything. And basically, he disappeared for a little bit. Thus, this causing Guile to come into play and have his vendetta against Vega and Shadowloo and everything. Now, like I said in, basically, the, my antagonist list, you know... Ba Ooh, the story with Nash and Guile and everything was very compelling in Street Fighter Zero Three. However, I do not know if it looks like Capcom retconned that, so some things might not like you know be as clear cut. And that's one of the things that uh, has actually been changed because Guile's motivation for going after Shadowloo was like one last mission with Charlie destroying basically the Shadowloo base in Thailand with Charlie being the casualty in it, which kind of blows, you know. But, you know, Guile and Charlie, like, you know, they're the two people that have gone after Shadowloo for a very long time and everything, and they're the reason why, they're like a huge reason why the Shadowloo plot is actually there, you know. And, you know, it's disappointing how when these two meet up in Street Fighter V and basically how they actually like resolved everything for the both of these characters it was really disappointing in Street Fighter V. But, you know, these two have both been a force of the whole franchise and a, a huge moving force of the franchise and, you know, they're all they're both awesome characters in their own rights. So can't complain right there. Alright. Number three, Gouken. Gouken is fairly interesting, you know. While only having one in-game appearance, you know, Gouken is actually is actually very distinguished from the other Shotos. While he does fight in the same Ansaskin style and everything, the way he utilizes his movements are really unique. You know, his you know he fights very differently than his brother, Goki, and as well as his students, Dio and Ken. You know, the only similarities are, you do see them, all three of them doing a Hadouken, a Tasmaki Sambukyaku, and a Shoryuken. But, the way he pulls off all these moves are really different, and as well as very powerful as well too. And he has a different fighting stance than all of them, you know. Plus, with one, plus he has been a huge factor of when it comes to the Asaskin story or the what people like to call the Sate no Hadu or the Power of Nothingness story and everything. You know, so with even though he's only appeared in one game, his lore has been felt throughout the whole franchise and everything. And to top it off, basically, you know. He's just a cool design and a cool, very cool for a sensei and everything, you know. So, Gouken gets the number three spot. Number two, Chun Li. We all knew she was going to be in the top two. It was obvious and everything. So, you know, why? So, here's the thing though Chun Li really did as, as much importance. In the Street Fighter franchise, especially with Street Fighter 2 and the Street Fighter Zero uh, lore, as Guile and Nash. 
So what makes her higher on the list? The fact that she has more longevity. You see, her story could have ended right at the very end of Street Fighter V, where basically it was the definitive fall of Shadowloo. However, she came back in the Street Fighter III series, and you've seen that she's actually grown and she's actually moved on more. You know, she has a different bow to face as a sensei. Well, no, correction, not as a sensei, as a shefu and everything, you know. And basically, you know, this is why Chun Li is number two, and to top it off, come on. First lady of all fighting games and one of the most unique designs and a character that is very much a workaholic, but you can see deep down that she really wants to have fun and be an average an average female. So truly definitely gets the number two spot. Who's number one? Well, before we go into that, honorable mentions. Ibuki. Ibuki is what is one of those characters that started out in Street Fighter 3. And, but, you know, when she got added in the Street Fighter 4, you know, she actually played a role, maybe not very pivotal, but she did play a role in the, uh, what you call, Street Fighter 4 tournament when it came to, like, you know, the Sin Corporation, which is an off branch of Shadowloo and everything. And she actually played a, a bit of an important role in the Street Fighter 3 series where she actually first had to get information regarding the Illuminati and everything, what she did. And then her graduation with encountering Oro, you know, the mo if the most powerful person in the whole Street Fighter franchise. All right. So with that, we go into Sakura, someone who I feel has been forced upon us, but we cannot deny that of every situation she's been in, she has actually moved the plot along fairly well. And, you know, basically, it's a pleasant surprise to see that basically, you know, Street Fighter V has finally shown her grown up and everything. So, basically, Sakura has been an uh, important moving factor in the whole franchise ever since her Zero debut. Ken. Ken would have been on this, on this list, but there's one problem. While Ken is one of the staples of the franchise, really has it progress the series all that much, you know, everything kind of revolves around basically his rive, his being taught by Gouken and everything, and then he won tournaments, but, you know, he's pretty much a family person and everything, and he's an outstanding supporting character, and, but almost everything with Ken, if it isn't about his family, it revolves around his relationship with basically being taught by Gouken, and his relationship with the number one person, Dew. It couldn't be anyone else, guys. It could not be anyone else but Dew. You know, Dew, the protagonist of the whole franchise, you know, he's the person that won the first tournament with beating Sagat. He's a person that actually, you know, we actually realize the dangers of the Ansaskin style, in particularly with the Satsi no Hadu and everything. And as well, Dew is the one that basically is like, you know, as we as we see in the whole franchise, he's actually on his um Mushiga Mushaju. Oh, I keep I can't believe I mispronounced it. But basically he is on his Warriors pilgrimage and everything. And it's through this Warriors pilgrimage we realize that Dew discovers the power of nothingness and everything. Something that basically is actually a lot more powerful than the Satsue no Hadu and everything. And so, Dew has actually, his path has crossed pretty much almost everybody's in the franchise. And we've had people either A, going after him, B, he actually has a relationship with, or C, has indirectly influenced, you know, two other characters, a few other characters and their motivations. So, Dew has to be the, he's, Dew is definitely number one in my top protagonist of all the Street Fighter franchise. Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Please, drop me a comment below and give me your five um, favorite protagonists of the whole series. Subscribe, um, like this video, follow me on Facebook at Token Dave, or follow me on Twitter at Token Dave 80 subscribe, and ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. 
But until then, this has been Token Day, Dorky Token Black Guy, who's just trying to get by. I'll catch you guys later.